Welcome back to Out of the Rough. I'm Fred Arnold. I'm joined by amazing guest, uh, Milan Hollister, uh, Dr. Milan Hollister, PhD. Um, you're internationally uh, recognized author, Back to Basics, The Five Core Values of Love Revisited. Um, also, you're a professor. I am a professor. Of I psychology. teach all genres of psychology. Right, right. Today, I want to talk to you about something that's I love, and that is about love, and, and the, the uh, five core values re revisited. Tell me, what is love to you? Well, I'm going to keep it simple. It's unconditional, and it's selfless service to others. And otherwise, it becomes very distorted. We put it on a scale somewhere between ice cream and your Ferrari or your car or whatever. So when we move to a place of unconditional love and we accept people for who they are, regardless if they belong in our space, if they don't belong, if they do belong in our space. Um, when we serve people with an authentic purpose, with love, then we're living in love. And love is the root of all the other values. So when I teach children, I tell them that life is like a test. And imagine your teacher gives you a test and she says, okay, here's, here's how it's gonna work. You get the first question right and all the other answers are right. Mm -hmm. Sweet. However, you get the first one wrong the rest of the test is wrong. And that's really what love is about because when you're rooted in love, all the other values just come out organically. You're in alignment with your truth. You're in alignment with peace. You're in alignment with making good choices and you're in alignment with nonviolence. I love the fact that um, love has to do with values and it also has to do with eventually your purpose. Mm -hmm. um, when I ask you when your values are clear, decisions are easy, what, what does that yes. mean to you? We are living, we need to live an authentic purpose. I think, I'm going to go out on a limb and say about 85% of people that I've come across really don't understand their authentic purpose. Mm -hmm. And authenticity comes from a place of love. It's, it's an integrity. It's an alignment with your thoughts, words, and actions. However, in addition to that, the thing that I always add to that is, are you doing what you're doing with love? Because every single one of us, if the question is, what do you do? The question for me, what do I do or any other other guess is I serve people. Mm -hmm. That's what I do. I mm -hmm. serve people. But whether you're a garbage man or a professor or whatever your purpose is, are you doing it with love, with mm -hmm. an authentic purpose? This is what I want to do. I love it. Mm -hmm. I'm happy. Mm -hmm. My family is happy. But unfortunately, we tend to mix purpose with money. Mm -hmm. And that's not purpose. Mm -hmm. Business is business. And Authentic purpose is rooted in love. You mentioned being authentic. Yes. But doesn't that make you vulnerable when you're, when you're authentic? I think the challenge with the word vulnerability is that we have come to define it as weakness. And that's vulnerability, true vulnerability, is just coming from a heart space that's not weak. Mm -hmm. In fact, that's probably the most beautiful gift that you can give to anybody is your true, authentic, heart-based self. I tell people, if you really want to be authentic, you have to stop the mind and you have to move from the heart. Mm -hmm. That's the only real way to be authentic and it's the only real, real way to find love. Mm -hmm. And that's where the vulnerability comes in. It's not about like, oh, I have to share like all my stories mm -hmm. and just open myself up. It's not, it's doing what we're doing and being present with people when we're with them. That's the vulnerability, the listening, the sharing. But oftentimes, we're always thinking about, what am I going to say next? What am I going to say next? How am I going to interject? How am I going to make this about me? That's not vulnerability. Yeah. So. I think one of the journeys of my life is to not be thinking of the next question or saying something when someone's saying it, is actually take it in Yeah. and, and, and hear what they're saying, right? So you can, and it makes you vulnerable because you're not always defending your position. You're not always trying yes. to be heard. You're trying to listen. I'm going to throw some questions out to you, some chapters in your book. Go for it. Um, did I really like truth? Truth. Truth. There are two kinds of truth. There's the abstract truth and the infinite truth. And the abstract truth is something that changes from moment to moment. Uh, what you knew when you were five, what you knew when you were 18, what you knew when you were 25, and I know you're only 26, so we'll stop there. Thank you. Um, 36. <laughs> it changes from moment to moment. Even today, something that you will learn from maybe one of your guests, you know, may ch change your truth. And that's an abstract truth. And that's what most of us live in on a day to day basis. And then there's the infinite truth. And that's something that's divine, it's unexplainable. Mm -hmm. It's, for most people, uh, it would be the equivalent of God in believing in God. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we don't see, we don't, it's not in front of us, but we just know. We just well, know. Th that leads me to a question. And we only have a short bit of time. Ego. Oh, yes. The dreaded ego. <laughs> we all have ego. So we're afraid to be vulnerable. 
We're afraid sometimes of the truth, and we're afraid looking deep within ourselves to find the truth. Well, ego is a complicated subject, and that's something that we could talk for a long time about. But ego is really about releasing attachment to what things look like. Mm -hmm. If we can let go of that, because we need our ego. Because if we didn't have our ego, we wouldn't eat, we wouldn't drink mm -hmm. water, we wouldn't, you know, do our taxes. Mm -hmm. So it's very functional, but it's about attaching to things and, and really becoming dependent on those things to define who we are. Mm -hmm. That's where we need to let go because that's, not, you know, coming full circle, that's not the space of love. Yeah, and if you can get rid of ego, you can really love. And if you can go yeah, do, you absolutely. can be present. Uh, can you stick around a little bit? I would love to. For those who want to reach out to you, though, before we end the segment, how yeah. can they reach you? They can go to MilanHollister.com. And that is the simplest way, or they can hashtag Milan Hollister, or back to the basic books, but they can find me there as well. Love it. We're going to jump to a quick break, and we'll be right back.